So I guess we got a good number. Okay. Good, good. So that was the winner. And then I guess you all can use it. I was just using different thing, uh, but it, uh, by max iteration you can say okay how much iteration you want it to go. So I was trying to make it faster. And based on just random number here, my number was not good. Uh, so it, uh, as you can see, probably uh, the contamination to be 0 0.003 and kernel stuff in RBF to be sigmoid was a lot better. So that's what I'm saying is like uh, if something is working for what one thing, it, it, it won't guarantee that it will work for the other thing. So one of the essential part of doing any kind of machine learning, I guess, is playing with hyperparameter, trying different things, and to see how can you get better score. Classes, right? Uh, so again, the the uh, parameter n u yes. is you take a guess of your training yes. data. Is like right? the yes, is like an upper bound for it, and it's just saying that how much you're allowed to ignore to be able to find that boundary around your data. I guess a good thing is that there isn't that many hyperparameters, right? What? Like there isn't that many hyperparameters if you're not using the polynomial. Yes, the exactly. So if you just use the linear, there's not that much thing you can do. But based on uh, the thing you are doing, uh, all right. So, so the winner so far apparently was one SPM. And the score, the one that Nemo shared was, okay, based on just 20,000 sample, and even the test was based on that, so it was like a final score point five. good, right? Because the, the true positive is almost a half, but then there's so little false positives, right, in his result. Uh, so, yeah, so it, uh, as you can see here, it, Basically, F1 score is a combination of precision and recall. Uh, for him, precision was super good because he just said that uh, apparently, as if you I guess if you add them together, we have less than hundred sample negative in twenty thousand, and he managed to kind of find half of them by just scoring fifteen positive sample as negative, which is a good thing. It means. Uh, the false positive one was super small. So, uh, I just want to move forward because I guess there is no time here. Uh, the other technique is there are clustering techniques, which they are kind of similar to the distance metrics that we used uh, last session which was based on the distance between two samples you can say if something is uh, outlayer or not and here all these clustering ones are kind of basically using the distance between two samples to be able to say what is known what is not <coughs> here for the k-means one i'm just using uh i'm just running the k-means and when i'm visualizing that you can see the model it depends on the k. Uh, you can find different. Uh, here, if I say number of cluster is three, it will find three cluster to make all these things at the very bottom to be another cluster. And if I say so, the best thing here would be like two. Which then you will have just two cluster here. And. So, okay, one of the things, as I said, is like one of the essential part in just training came is would you, would you, what is the best K, which you can use maybe different technique, either there's like an elbow, the, I don't know, or the, the, the distance to the center, all those techniques. There are lots of techniques that you might explore to see what is maybe the best K for you in your data set. Once you have a model, 
uh, then based on the distance to the center, I just here, here just manually say, okay, the square of the distance to the center is something. Then I, I find what is the average, and I say, what if anything is more than average, then maybe that should be anomaly. And that was the uh, score for me, if I had like a three plus. So in k-means, uh, the idea is you can make lots of cluster. Then you can find anomaly in two different ways. One of the way, one of them would be say what is the distance of each of each sample to the closest center, and then you can have a threshold to say that if that distance is more than something, then that no, that sample maybe uh, is not normal. Or you can say even if you have maybe more, if you do, if you can find the best k, you can say even if you find a cluster but the size of the cluster is super small, then maybe all of them are like outlayer. So that's how you can kind of find uh, any kind of uh, not normal or rare event or out of distribution thing just by using any kind of clustering techniques. Uh, something as easy as uh, k-means, you can use hierarchical clustering or you can use anything that you are comfortable with. But the other, Technique, which was, uh, which which is one of the cool way of doing that is DBSCAN, which is which is trying to uh, cluster the data based on their density. So instead of just finding a bunch of k and try to uh, to say that okay, I just want to find k cluster, you're just looking at the data and based on the neighborhood, you're saying okay, if, if the distance is less than something then you are part of me. And then it, then it can find some connected cluster as well. So it means here, if I run k-means, here you can see it's super cool. It finds all these two cluster. But if I look at two moon, see, that is the thing that k-means will generate. Like, it will split it to the half. I will say, okay, that's the first one and that's the second one. It won't find the actual cluster in your data because the data is not a bunch of Gaussian thing. is 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 like super complex pattern in your data. That's why came is won't be, won't work here. But let's see how DBSCAN will work actually. So DBSCAN is working well when you have like a two cluster because they will say they are connected to each other. But let's see how two moon is working. And I have a problem. You, you can do the bottom one as well. Oh, yeah, the bottom one with the red region is correct. In the same side. What? Uh, oh. Yes. So here I didn't put, okay, maybe you can even make the cluster, but the, I don't, the color is not thing. But see, that's the cluster number one, that's the cluster number two, even it just finds something here as well. But then it says these points are anomaly here as well. So, it was it managed to find these things as a cluster, and if I even change the number of uh, minimum sample, it might even ignore that one as well. If I say minimum sample should be, let's say ten, one, see, no, all of these nodes are, are are anomaly as well. So the thing is doing it like that. The whole idea of uh, DBS scan is will try and try to let's say pick find some point and then it will say what is in my uh, it what is in my neighborhood based on some distance. The distance is a number that you're passing here. And then you're saying that the definition of cluster is if you have at least minimum of that point in your cluster. So it, it will say so then here it will make uh, two cluster two cluster one, number one, number two, and the rest will be uh, all those samples without any cluster. 
So it's going to be plus or, it would be not one, two, and for all these would be would be minus one. Because it can't find any good cluster for them, we satisfy these two to be in, to that that will be the distance, and they make a cluster which the minimum size is at least ten. Yes, the one who can kind of make a cluster. And this two number is the way that you're kind of defining the definition. You're saying that what is a definition of a cluster. But DBS can be super powerful when you, are, when you have super connected data. And the other thing is you, don't, you won't need, to, there's no K for you that you have to find it. But the thing that you have to know is what is the thing that, which is meaningful here. So for finding uh, anomaly, for finding outlier, the thing that you have to define in k-means is already part of that uh, model, which is minimum number of uh, samples. And epsilon is one of the other things which we said in k-means, you should have a threshold for distance. And it's already part of that model. So dbsk is kind of perfect <coughs> for finding any kind of uh, outlier oh. in all those clustering techniques. So in this case, the main difference between the scan and k-means is k-means have sanctuary. Yes. But then this one does it. Yes. Right, so. When would you increase the distance parameter? What? When would you increase the distance parameter? Here? Yeah. Uh, it still is, is one of the hap kind of other parameter of, of your data. Here, I can usually say that, what is, <coughs> what is the best one? Let's say, uh, Visually, you are normalizing your data, and then once you normalize that, you can say what is the maximum distance. Let's say if the data is just one dimensional, <coughs> and if you normalize it, you know what the max distance is one, and then you can say, well, maybe maybe the, the, the minimum distance that I want to make a cluster would be maybe 10% of it, then it would be 0 0.1, or something like that. So you have to, is, is a, this is one of the parameters that you have to play with, and that would be your threshold that you would say if a point is further from the rest of them based on that definition, which would be the, 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 the distance, then you're saying that that node is kind of is isolated. But that's the thing that you have to define it based on your data. And that's why in exercise number three, <laughs> you will the only thing that you have to find is minimum sample. Okay, there are the other things that you can find play with that as well. But is minimum sample and epsilon. The other thing for sure, because it's a distance-based uh, technique, is what is the definition of distance? It can be Fidian, it can be cosine similarity, it can be anything that you want, but what is distance is, is one of the things that you can define as well. But the, by default is a Fidian. So then here, that's why the only thing that, that, I, that I have to find is what is the minimum sample for me to make a cluster and what is the epsilon? So the drawback of k means is it more about the distance it used, or it's about the sanctuary to fix? So which is its problem? Uh, for k means, okay, it has some lots of drawback. As well. Lots of drawback. I would say one of, one of them is okay. Yes, you have to have a K. Then it, you're 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 saying that that's the number of clusters that I should have. So it means okay, maybe they're solving different problems. Sometimes you are saying that I need two clusters. I need five clusters. I want to find five clusters. The DBS can won't guarantee that. It will just find all the connected one. It can be ten. It can be two. And based on the distance, you might be able to force it to find different things, but it won't find the number of cluster that you are looking for. But if, if you know already how many cluster you want, then the k means would be the best. But the thing is, k means is a method that will look at the distance, let's say if it's two dimension, it will look at, maybe it would be based on some circle of, of uh, it will just try it, um, it's like fitting Gaussian. It, 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 so it means, uh, it will find a cluster that all the distance to the center is, is, is a similar. So you can say, okay, uh, if, the, if, the, if the distribution, if, if the shape of the data is not like a normal, then it will be super hard for the chemist to actually find that cluster.
So yeah. Uh, and the funny thing is usually uh, in lots of machine learning techniques, the assumption is everything is Gaussian, and then you should be able to uh, feed the data with GMM, all those things. That's why maybe k-means is, is one of the good things, because it's based, it satisfies the assumption of all the tech, most of the techniques in machine learning. But if you have any super complex connected samples in your data, maybe DBSCAN is one of the best. And for sure, it will satisfy the thing that you're looking for, which means finding all those outliers. And I guess exercise number. Uh, three, right? 